Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the camera, ortho width, and clip planes. Now we're going to run through this quick little example. Well, let's keep in mind that ortho stands for orthographic, or it's the view mode where basically you're flattening things out and things don't have depth. So this is going to cover three nodes, and it's going to cover how the camera works with them. But basically, if I was to change my width, it's going to change the width of my orthographic camera. It sets the fixed width on that camera. The near clip plane determines the items that are close to the camera, basically where the camera starts. And the far clip plane, far clip plane determines how far the camera can see before things disappear. Let's cover how they actually work and then it'll make a little more sense. So if I pull up my character here, I have a camera attached. Now by default, you're gonna have a perspective camera, but if we're working in orthographic mode, you're gonna actually have a, these three options that we're talking about. The ortho width, the clip plane near, and the clip plane far. And if we were to open up the correct blueprint, find the ortho one, you'll find the three nodes we're talking about, which is gonna be a ortho near clip plane, ortho far clip plane, and then the ortho width itself. Now let's cover what they do. The first thing we need to do is start this up in a separate window. And this is where it's going to be important here. Let's go ahead and set our width to something like, I think it was 44 is what I want to say, 45. There we go. You can see the side of my character a little bit here and here. Now the width of the clip, the width of the ortho determines basically kind of how zoomed in it is on an orthographic perspective. But the important point is it's fixed. If I was to maximize my view, we still have a little bit of space left and right, a few pixels. If I make it smaller, doesn't matter what I do, changing it width wise, you're always going to see this little bit of a lip on the left and right because our width is fixed to 45 pixels right now. Now, if I make my viewport taller, you're going to see more of my character on the vertical. But the width that I am seeing will never change. And that's basically how you can determine a fixed width on an orthographic camera by using the ortho width function. Now, if we look at the clip planes, let's start this over again. Let's look at our scene. Right now, our scene is our player starts here. We have a ground on the floor and we have a little sphere in the background. Looking at it right now, we have a near clip plane of zero, and we have a far clip plane of a large amount. These are the defaults, that's why they're here. If we adjust our near clip plane to a higher amount, eventually our player is going to disappear. Parts of our player, not really everything. It's because, keep in mind, our player is technically 3D. He has the back of the player. We have the front of the player. If I go into my player itself, we have the back of the player, the front of the player, and this little sphere that I use to indicate like a nose. So different parts as we get forward, as we go like this, basically, if I could, let's slow this down. Oop, there we go. As we get closer, our clip plane is basically doing this and pushing in and pushing in. And eventually you're going to clip past. Now you can't see that part and you're just going to see the front. And that's how the clip plane is basically going to work. So when we adjust this, our clip plane will go forward and more. And of course, as we move, if we get closer to the sphere, you're going to see part of the sphere clipping. The far clip plane is basically the opposite. It determines how far away, or basically the end point of our camera. Now, by default, it's going to show everything. And if I was to do something like this, it's going to start really hard to adjust. We go down to something like 1,000. We're still seeing stuff in the back, something like 500. Well, then now we're gone. See how the end of the plane that's on my floor basically disappears. That's basically 500 units from where the camera starts to where the camera basically will stop. 600 will give us a little bit more. Now you can actually see our sphere coming in and out of existence based on where we're looking at it. And that's basically, that is the basics of the orthographic camera in terms of those three settings, the width, the near clip plane, and the far clip plane. Now in order to use the nodes, basically you need the camera. So I'm talking to my character and getting the camera component, which is right here. 
And then I'm using the set ortho width node. Just do set ortho, and you'll find set ortho width, set ortho far clip plane, and set ortho near clip plane. And keep in mind, if we were just to do set ortho, they will not show up. They are context sensitive against the camera component itself. You will notice there are two versions here. You have this, which is a function version, and then this, which is an actual property version. They are going to work the same. This is basically going to talk to the property and set the width, whereas this version is directly contacting the property and not using the function itself. Feel free to pick whichever one you want. They're going to accomplish the same goal. Just make sure you have a camera component as a target or else it will not work. You can, of course, get those values as well. Simply talk to your, there you go, right here, your camera, and you can do a get on the ortho width, or you can get the near clip plane or the far clip plane. And that's basically going to wrap it up. That is our far clip plane, near clip plane, and ortho width nodes. Remember, they can be set using the node versions or on your camera itself. If you're in the orthographic, you can change the defaults here.